Okay, in this video, I want to show you three different ways to protect your Excel spreadsheet. Here's a typical Excel spreadsheet. And uh, if we look at cell uh, C4, uh, we have a normal number. You can see up in the form of the bar, it's just a normal number. And the rest of the column C is just normal numbers. But if we look at column D, then uh, it has a formula. And all the other cells from column D on over have formulas. So I want people to change this workbook and use it and benefit from it, but I sure do not want people to change my formulas. So uh, let's talk about uh, protecting certain cells. So in this case, I'm going to highlight column C. I'm going to highlight from C4 to C9. So basically, you're going to highlight the cells that you want them to change. Now, we're going to go into our classic format cells. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click on those cells, right click, and then we'll pick on format cells. Now, if you've been using Excel for a long time like I have, I'm sure you've seen this screen before. Most of it is about formatting. Uh, but over here, we're going to pick on the Protection tab of Format Cells. Notice how it says that those cells are locked. In fact, all of the cells in the entire spreadsheet are locked by default. But um, uh, look what it says down here. Locking cells or hiding formulas has no effect until you protect the workbook. So the fact that they're locked really doesn't mean anything right now until the protection is on. So we're going to unlock those cells and click on OK. So what you really do is you're going to unlock the cells that you want them to type in, and then everything else is uh, locked by default. But we still have to turn the protection on. To turn the protection on, you're going to pick in the Review menu up top, and then you pick on Protect Sheet. Okay. And we're going to get this window. Now, here's how this window works. Anything that you check, any of these boxes that you check, they'll still be able to do that when the protection is on. So if you want them to be able to insert rows and columns, you would check those boxes accordingly. Anything that's checked means they'll still be able to do that when the protection is on. Anything that's not checked means they won't be able to do that uh, feature when the protection is on. Uh, notice how it's asking for a password. So you make up a password uh, yourself, whatever you want that to be. And I just clicked on OK. And I want you to verify the password. Notice how it does say it's case sensitive. So you type in the exact same thing. And I'll click on OK. Now the protection is on. So that means we can only change the cells that we had uh, locked in that previous step, which is column C. So for example, if I go to cell uh, C4, I'll type in 15,000. It's let me change that cell. And before I hit the Enter key, watch row 11, watch row 4. You'll see how the other numbers change because the formulas still work. Everything still works. Now, I'm going to go to cell D4. The only cells that I had unlocked in that previous step was column C. So everything from column D over is still locked. And now it really means something. So I'll type in uh, 20,000 here. I'm, I'm actually going to type in something. And look what it says. The cell or chart that you're trying to change is on a protected sheet. So it really worked. And I'll click on OK. So what you really do is you unlock some of the cells that you want them to change. Uh, and you do that within Format Cells and within the Protection tab. You're going to uncheck it where it says Locked. Everything else is locked by default. And then uh, you pick on Review and then pr Protect Sheet. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say Unprotect Sheet. All right, and then I'll type in my password. So make sure you pick something that uh, they couldn't figure out. Like Don't use the word password as your password. Or don't use one, two, three, four, five, six like everybody uses. Try to think of something different, you know, so that uh, people couldn't easily guess that. And, and don't, uh, don't use something that's uh, easy. All right, so uh, watch what we did again. We're gonna highlight the cells that we want them to type in. You right click on those and you pick on Format Cells. And then you pick on the Protection tab and you make sure it's not checked where it says Locked. You unlock the cells that you want them to type in. And then um, from here, I'll pick on Review and Protect Sheet. And at that point, you would type in your password. Uh, now, the second type of, of protection, uh, by the way, let me go ahead and uh, put those back to uh, a locked state. So I'm going to highlight those cells and right click on them. And I'll pick on Format Cells. And I'm going to pick on make them locked again for this next example. Now, here's the second way to do uh, protection in your Excel spreadsheet. We can actually put a password protection on each uh, range. 
let's say, just for an example, that there's one person who's in charge of uh, changing column A. There's another person who's in charge uh, of changing row 3 and those titles. And there's another person who's in charge of changing the numbers. Okay, So we can actually password protect each individual range so that one user couldn't change another user's uh, part of the spreadsheet. So this actually helps you enforce checks and balances at your company. In this case, we're going to pick on the review menu. And then over here, we're going to say allow users to edit ranges. Right there. All right. Now, you can have as many ranges as you want. So we're going to pick on the word new. And then, uh, you know, it doesn't matter really what the title is. So I'll just call that one range one. Uh, now, over here where it says refers to cells, I'm going to delete what's there. And I'm going to highlight column A. And let's say uh, I'll type in a password for that range. And I'll click on OK. And I'll type in the same password. And click on OK. Notice how that one is also case sensitive. And there's that first range. Now let's do a couple more. I pick on new. Maybe another person can, can change uh, the titles in row three. So the title of the range isn't that important, but if you want to give that a good name, you can give it a title. I want to highlight from the word January to the word percent of total, and I'll give that a password. And I'll click on OK and type in the same password again. And now you can see both ranges are in there. Let's do one more. I'll pick on new. And uh, again, I'm going to delete what's uh, in the refers to cell section and highlight all of the numbers and the formulas. And uh, we'll give that one a password as well. And then, of course, I'll click on OK and we'll verify that. So you can have as many of those as you need. Uh, you can see it's not hard to, uh, to get to work. Now, in this case, after you're done making your ranges, then you still have to protect the sheet to actually turn it on. So I'll pick on Protect Sheet, all right? And at this point, I'll click on OK. Now, I'm going to save my spreadsheet. All right, so let's say person number one comes along, and they're responsible for changing column A. So I want to click on cell A4, and I'll try to type in the word sales, but as soon as I try to type in there, notice how it wants to have the password for that range. So I will type that in. By the way, if I type in the incorrect password, it, it does, you know, it does work. So uh, let me try that again. And now I'll type in the correct password. Now that unlocks the first range. So now I can change that to sales. I can change that to R&D and so on. So that one password unlocked range number one. Now, let's say that same person tries to change C3. And when I try to type something in there, it's asking for a different password. OK, so if I type in the same password as before, it's not going to like that. So in this case, each person can change their own specific range. All right. Uh, so maybe p the first person doesn't know the password to the second uh, to the second range. So I'll go ahead and save this workbook. Let's say now the second person comes along. They're going to ch um, they're going to go ahead and uh, close that workbook and then reopen it. All right, let me go right back into there. Now the second person comes along, and they're going to try to change cell uh, C3, and I'll type in Jan there. Notice how it's going to ask for the password at that point. And now I typed in the proper password, and they're good to go. Now they can change anything in row 3, as we can see. Actually, in this case, I'll just drag that over to do the speed fill. Uh, now, if I try to, this is person number 2 now. If I try to change uh, A4, that is still password protected. Uh, so they wouldn't know the password to the first range. So this is a really effective way to, um, to password protect each individual range. Maybe several people are on the spreadsheet, and they should only change their own section. This is a great way to enforce that. So let me turn the protection off. I'll pick on Review, and then Unprotect Sheet. Here's how we did that. I picked on the Review menu, and we said Allow Users to Edit the Ranges. 
And then uh, I'll just add one more range here. I'll pick on new. The range title doesn't really matter. So you highlight where it says refers to cells. You highlight what you want. And then you give that a password. And I'll type that in again. So it's really a great way to make sure that uh, each person can only change their section of the spreadsheet and nothing else. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on OK there. At that point, once you did that, of course, you would pick on Protect Sheet. Now, let me show you one more way to protect this workbook. Perhaps there's people that shouldn't be in this workbook at all. So as soon as they open up the workbook, I want it to open up, a, I want it to give them a password at that point. So this is just going to be another variation of Save As. I'll pick on File and then Save As. Now in 2013, you're going to pick on the word Browse. And you have your classic Save As window. All right. So in this case, on the Save As window, you're going to pick on the word Tools, and then you pick on General Options. And then this will allow you to type in other passwords. So I'll type in a password to open the file, and I'll type in a password to modify the file. So again, when you're using these passwords, over, try to think of something that people could not think of. Uh, they'll make it easy for them. Uh, so I'll click on OK. Now it wants you to verify those. So I'll type in my first password. That was the password to open. And I'll click on OK. And then I'll type in the second password. That was the password to modify. And click on OK. All right. And then uh, so the way we got there was we did a save as. We picked on tools. And we said general options. Uh, now you still have to save it. So I'll pick on save there. It says do I want to replace that file? Yes, I do, because the new one will have the passwords. So I'll pick on Yes. Now, to see this one really in effect, we're going to close, uh, close out all together so we can get back in again. Let me go back into Excel. And I'm going to go back into the chart example that I was just in. Notice as soon as I open up the password, it wants to, I mean, as soon as I open up the file, it wants the first password. So if they don't know the first password, they can't get in at all. I'll type in my first password, and I'll click on OK. Now, if they don't know the second password, they can still go in as read only. So I'll pick on read only. Now, I want you to see that up here on the title bar, it does say read only. That means they can use the workbook, and everything will still work. They can change whatever they wanted to now. They just can't save it. When I try to save it, look what it says. It says I can save a, uh, a copy to a different file, but I can't save it to the main file because it's read only. All right. So with that kind of protection, if they don't know the first password, they can't get in at all. If they know the first password but not the second password, they'll go in as read only. Then, of course, if they know both passwords, they'll, they'll have full access to the file. Uh, so in this case, I'm not going to save a different copy to that file. So um, let me show you how I set that one again. I'm going to close that window so I can reopen it. Let me go right back in there, and uh, we'll reopen it. You can, so I'll go into the chart example. This time I'm going to type in both passwords. And now I'm completely in. To set those, I picked on File, and then Save As, and then pick on Browse. You're going to pick on the word Tools on the Save As window. And then we're going to do general options. By the way, since I'm here, I can change the passwords that I had before, or I can either I can even remove the passwords. But I would have had to log on with both passwords to order to get to the screen, so I can either change them or delete them. In this case, I'm going to delete them completely, and click on OK. Make sure you pick on Save, and then we'll say Yes to replace that. So now with this video. You'll actually have three different ways to protect your Excel spreadsheet.